Hi, this is going to be hopefully a repair video. We'll see how this uh, actually goes here. This is of a um, old model, an older model. It's a Pell 609. It's a 110, 120 volt. Um, Pell. This is this particular unit is from probably the early mid 90s uh, when this unit was made and sold here in the states. Um, Pell is still around, but it's actually owned. At some point in time, got bought by um, True Test. Uh, which is the people that own Patriot, Stay Fix, and Speedrite electric fence products. Um, but uh, Pell's still made by them, or, yeah, made by them, but they aren't sold here in the States uh, anymore. They're um, sold over, they might be sold in Europe, but I would guess mostly in um, um, Australia, New Zealand. Uh, there are units I've seen online, the new Pell stuff is the blue in case where the um, stay fix units are green and the uh, speed right stuff is red but the same looks like the same kind of case just different stickers and different colored case color on the front um, but I've already taken the screws out of the bottom of this thing this thing's in layers and I believe I've kind of tested a few things but I believe my problems that thing right there because um, I did a test on it because um, this thing's the reason I don't I can go through the whole repair of taking a bunch of stuff apart because this thing's built in layers. You gotta take a lot of this crap off just to get to the board and get to the capacitors and stuff like that. It's got two great big capacitors in there, and uh, the capacitors themselves are good, uh, so I didn't dig too much deeper after that. So I'm gonna pull this board out of here. But yeah, this thing is um, pretty stout. Um, it's. I would have to say probably a um, 20 joule, somewhere in that range. I just want to get bit by this thing by accident. It has a little red LED right, right there, and it came on, so I know the power coming into it's good. But the capacitors hide underneath here. There's two of them, one there and one there. I pulled this piece off, pulled this plastic guard thing out of there, and... Um, there, it reads like 100.1, so I know the capacitors are fine because they're reading 50 a piece, so they're tied together and and um, parallel, so they're uh, adding up on the capacitors. So we're going to uh, change out that SCR right there um, and I find a replacement first. Um, no, first, let's just pull the capacitor or the SCR off there first. So. We'll do that real quick. What I'm doing is I'm using uh, some of the desoldering braid. There's um, a bunch of ways of desoldering. You can use the little manual pumps, which I've got one of those around here. Just a little pump you, you heat it up after you, you pump it up by pressing this little lock thing and then you release it doing that but you pretty much hit put that on there heat at the same time and then you do that and it sucks the solder but it takes usually sometimes two three four tries depending on how what angle and how much solder is on there so that the soldering braid that I use is this stuff here it's got um, um, rosin like um, a flux type stuff built into um, kind of embedded and stuff so it, it allows the transfer of heat really well with your um, solder and uh, solder and soldering iron so it works really well so that's what I use um, you also get those electric uh, desoldering pumps which are good they're just kind of expensive um, so that's why you know for 20 bucks you can get this big roll here uh, this stuff here you can get on Amazon for about $20 um, and this is a 50 50 foot roll and uh, I bought this back in January and I still got about half a roll left so as much soldering that I do it lasts quite a while and 20 bucks a lot more feasible for me to fork over than um, you know several hundred dollars for electric pump electric desoldering pump so we're going to put one of these bigger ones in here just so it has something to that can handle the stress a little bit better. 
but we may have to do may have to drill the holes just a little bit bigger so the leads of that new SCR can fit in there better in just a little bit like that and then we will solder that back on and I think this is all that's wrong I think that um, I hope that's all that's wrong Turn the light on so I can see what I'm doing. Uh, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to run a wire. Uh, let's see. We'll get a um, heavier gauge wire. And we'll run a jumper over to it because when I put the hole through the board to make the hole a little bit bigger it messed up the um, uh, solder pads I didn't think about that what we'll do is we'll electrically solder that wire over there that one took so this one to one of these over here because it doesn't matter all those are electrically the same spot so I'm going to add a little solder to this I could probably use a smaller gauge wire but I'd rather be safe than sorry and just have a little too big than not big enough put some solder on that tab there Take this, heat the two up together, take this, cut it there, we won't make it a little long so that way you got plenty of room, plenty of ex extra wire in case you make a mistake, easier to take wire away then to add wire back add one more solder to that spot there so this is a little more surface area and we'll take put a little more solder on that one there all right now we'll there like it's harden up the solder dry and everything that one's done then we'll take another wire because you can't get parts for these things so you've got to rebuild what's in there or you end up throwing the thing away you know because like I said this is probably a 20 joule unit I would I would guess so to buy a new 20 joule you'll be spending several hundred dollars for a good one. I'm just going to solder right to that middle one since it's straight at it. There's nothing soldered there so we're going to make it its home right there. So we will heat those two up together. Let it dry, cool off. Take pair of snips and you can use about that long Ooh, almost put that a little too short we'll see how this works Ooh, pull the wire insulation off Sorrow. 
on the wire. Now let's put some solder on this tab. Now we'll take pliers. And now we'll just fuse those two spots together. Oh, wait a minute, I gotta, before I do that, there's some, I didn't twist the stranded wire and it didn't get all of them. Oh, I soldered it. Right, we'll add some more solder to there and get those other wires that didn't take. Okay. Now let's try this again. Got to hope this fix it. It'd be a big waste of my time if it doesn't. Okay. All right, solder, do your magic. All right. I want to do a. Uh, Continuity test between that other. Oh, can't get it took. I just want to make sure. Okay. And this one's over right here. Should be good. All right. Put that screw thing back on hold that board in place let's plug it in cross our eyes ears and everything else that you can all right now you hear it clicking wasn't doing that before it was just it was just um um staying on solid it wouldn't click at all so my guess was right nice bright little LED there let's unplug it let's hook up the um, fence tester here I don't want to mess this tester up so I'm going to use my um, I've got a good We're going to have to use that analog tester then. I just don't want to hurt my tester because I like that needle gauge one. I can still get another one, but I want to pay 40 bucks for it, especially when it's working fine. But we'll see what happens. Please don't burn nothing up. All right. Getting about. 7.5 kV, roughly 7,500 volts out of it. This is probably right where it should be. Most brands are anywhere from 6,000 to 9,000, and 7 and a half is right in the middle there. So we are good there. I want to show you the spark that this thing jumps. So I'm going to tie onto the ground side there. And then uh, full power terminals there. Half power or reduced power, whatever they call it, is in the middle. Oops. So let's plug it back in. I'm going to get bit by this thing, so I'm going to grab the wire with a pair of needle nose. Here we go. See, the thing throws a huge spark.
the uh, video doesn't do this justice. So that reduced power. See how strong it is. Reduced power's just about as strong as the full power is. You know, looking at visibly, but well, that fixed this one. Brought another old model back from the dead. So hopefully you liked this video. I mean, this wasn't too much to look at, but it was kind of interesting seeing the, look at the shape of this thing. It's like an egg. It's kind of a weird shape. But hopefully this, um, you know, some benefit for you or, you know, if you're looking for a, some place to send a unit for repair or, you know, have tr want some help. Tr oh, crap. Hold on, hold on. I got to put that this little doodad here back in so it holds the board down in place uh, I almost forgot I gotta shift, shift this back to a place I don't want it to jostle loose and that board come out of you know come loose and shipping or something stupid But fencer fixer is our name. And that's what we do is repair electric fencers and fence chargers and stuff like that. We also work on um, cattle scale and you know, livestock scales for squeeze shoots and alleyway platform scales. Uh, we work on uh, EID, uh, you know, ear, ta ear tag readers, the portable ones, you know, for handheld ones and the uh, uh, ones that get mounted with the big antennas on the side of your shoots and crushes and stuff. So if you need help with that stuff, I mean, we can help you there too. Um, but hopefully this video was some benefit for you and, you know, found a place that we're willing to work on stuff. If you want to try to do the repair yourself, you know, we can help you, hopefully help you with that as well. We can get you parts and, you know, we always put a year and a half warranty on everything that we work on, uh, the repairs that we do, which uh, lightning damage is part of our repair warranty. If um, you do the repair yourself, uh, we and you buy parts from us, we pass that same year and a half warranty on to you as well for the you know the parts you get from us. Uh, lightning damage is included as part of our warranty. We don't get a lot of warranty repairs that are our warranty that we provide for our, to our customers and you know that let us work on stuff. But uh, we do from time to time because you know lightning. You know, it's a big factor with these electric fence boxes, old style, new style. Um, but um, give us a thumbs up on the video if you like, and subscribe to our channel if you'd want. Um, you know, we appreciate it. Uh, you can go to our website, which is a fencerfixer.com, and fencer is spelled just like that, F-E-N-C-E-R, and fixer is F-I-X-E-R.com. There's a little link that you can copy and paste into your browser or maybe possibly click on. It's in the description below. Um, our Facebook page is on there, so you can like us on there as well. We don't get on Facebook too often because I got too many repairs to do. I don't have time to focus on Facebook stuff, and I don't have enough time to focus on these YouTube videos like I'd want. But um, you know, I got a I got a stack of repairs staring at me all the time. So um, if you, someone lived a lot closer, you know, I'd probably put you to work. And there's plenty to do. But anyways, until we uh, provide another video of how to fix something or how to test something or whatever, we will see you later. Oh, I want to see what it looks like flashing from the outside since the case is back on there now. There it is. It's flashing along. Weird looking charger. It's a funny shaped case. But... It is what it is.